Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today we're going to be making this fun mixed media mini clipboard project and we're going to be using several products from the Tim Holtz collection. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start off with the Tim Holtz Ideology Collection mini clipboard and we're going to take off this clip. So I'm just going to unscrew these and set this aside for now. So now we're going to be covering this with some collage paper from, again, the Tim Holtz Ideology Collection. And this is called Christmas Noel. And you, you'll see how beautiful this is. So I'm just trying to determine what section of this paper that I want to use. And I think I kind of like that holly and berries section. So I'm just going to cut away the excess here. But I will keep that for another project. And then I'm going to go ahead and set this aside. So now I'm going to use my Distress Collage Medium. This is the matte finish. And I'll also use my collage brush. And this works perfectly for adding this collage medium. I'm just going to add a nice coating of this over the entire top of my mini clipboard. And I'm being generous, but not too, too thick. I just want a nice, even coating of that. Now I can go ahead and lay this collage paper right over top here. And I do want to press out any bubbles or anything. Now, if you want a more distressed look, you could let it crinkle up a little bit, have some creases and folds in there. But I did want a flat finish here. So I'm using my We Are Memory Keepers bone folder just to press that out. Now I can go ahead and cut away any excess of the collage paper. And I'm using my nine and a half inch shears to do that. Just makes it really easy to cut away these long stretches of paper here. Now I'll go right back over the top of this entire thing with that collage medium. And again, I'm just applying a nice even coating of that. Now once this is done, I'm going to let this sit for a while to dry. You can use your heat tool here if you want to speed up the process, but I'm just going to set this aside and let that dry. And you do want to make sure you rinse off that brush really well with some warm water and then let that air dry as well. So now I've just got a little sanding block here and I'm just going to go right around the edges here and just take away any of that excess paper that didn't get cut away. And it's also going to distress the edges just a little bit here. You could use a super fine sandpaper, whatever you have would be fine. Even a little cosmetic sanding tool would work here. So I've got my Nuvo Surface Sweep brush and I'm just using that because it's a super soft brush just to brush away any excess dust here. Now I've got my gesso. This is uh, just a white gesso. And I'm just kind of keeping my brush very dry. I'm just patting off any excess. I don't want to cover this entire thing. I just want to add a little bit of that white just to give it a wintry, snowy effect here. And you can see that that collage paper allowed the brown color, the craft color of the clipboard to come through. And I really like that. It adds to the vintage look that we're going for. So again, I'm just applying a little bit of that gesso here. And then I'm going to cover the edges of this. I'm just going to paint that on all around the edges. And I did that all the way around. Now I'll let that dry again. Now I've got my Distress Texture Paste. And this is a set of three different pastes. You get, in this set, you get the matte texture paste, which is what we're going to be using today. You get the crackle texture and the grit paste. So again, this texture paste in the matte finish is what we're going to be using today. That's the crackle, and here is the grit paste. So we'll set those other two aside, and then I'm going to grab a stencil here. 
These are the mini stencils from Tim Holtz again. And you get these three. And these are from the Stampers Anonymous collection. And this is set number 35. So I did decide here to use that middle one, which I believe is called Cells. And so I'm going to stencil with that texture paste just here and there on this uh, clipboard. So I've just got a small palette knife here because I don't want to apply too much of the texture paste. I really kind of want to control where it's going to go here. So I'm starting in the upper right hand corner. And I'm just going to just apply a nice even coating of that and just want to kind of spread it out. And then I'm scraping away any excess on the sides. And then where that pattern didn't kind of fill in, I'm just going to remove that. And you can easily do that while the texture paste is wet. Now I'll just apply some more texture paste here and there. And I'll do that same thing, just removing any areas that I don't really want that excess to be. And then scraping off the sides as well. Now you could switch stencils here if you wanted to mix up your patterns. But I decided just to stick with this one stencil. Now I'm going back to my white gesso. I'm placing a little bit on my glass media mat. I'll spritz that with a little bit of water. And then I'm going to spatter this entire clipboard. And that's going to give us that beautiful snowy effect. Now again, I'm going to set that aside to dry. So going back to the clipboard, I'm just going to open up those two holes at the top for the little clip. And I'm just using my Tim Holtz pick tool to do that. Just so I can see where those are as we go along uh, finishing up designing this clipboard. So now I've got from my paper stash, I've got the Christmas Noel collection. Now this came out, I believe, last year. So I'm using this pattern paper that has the red and white polka dots on it. And then I've got this adorable retro oven Sizzix die from the Tim Holtz collection. And you get all the little pieces you need to create this cute little oven. So I'm going to make my oven a polka dot oven just because I can. And I'm using the metallic craft stock from Tim Holtz. And we're going to be using the silver to do some of the accents on the oven. Now, to create the little cookies for inside the oven, you get these four dies. And you've got gingerbread, stars, hearts, and little Christmas trees. So I'm going to die cut those out of some craft cardstock. And then from the metallic car cardstock, I'm going to cut out some of those oven um, embellishments. So I've gone ahead and die cut the oven. And I've die cut an extra one out of some white 100-pound cardstock. And that'll just thicken this up a little bit. I just wanted to give it a little bit more substance. Now with my Walnut Stain Dye Ink, this is the mini dye ink pad. I'm using a sponge uh, dauber and I'm going to go around the edges of the outside and the inside of that oven as well. Just to take away that white edge. Now we can start assembling our oven. And I've kept that picture of the oven out there just so I can follow along. Just so I make sure I put all these pieces in the right place. Now there are little grooves on the uh, die cut when you cut it out so you know where to place all these little features. And you can see it better on that white cardstock as I showed you a little bit earlier there. On the red cardstock it was a little bit harder to see but you can still see it if you hold it up to the light. So just keep that in mind when you're die cutting this. Now again, I'm just adding all these little pieces. This is the metallic piece that is for that little gauge right at the top of the oven there. And I'm just using my Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive to attach all of these pieces. And here you can see I'm trying to find that little marking where this piece goes. So if you just tilt it towards the light, you can easily see where to place these pieces. And I'm at, I am edging some of these with that walnut stain ink, just again to give it more of a vintage look. And this was really fun to put together. It's fun just to kind of sit and put this together, kind of like creating a little puzzle here. 
So here I put the glue down first just because I thought it would be easier for that little thin strip to place that down first. Now you've got the little burners for the stove. I'll just position those in place. And I love these retro ovens. I have a retro oven in my kitchen. I'm not a cook, so it doesn't get used very much, but I do love the look of it and uh, it just makes me happy. So, um, and again, I decided to make mine polka dotted, but you could certainly make yours a metallic or white or silver. And here I just colored in that little gauge for the top here. I didn't want to go back and die cut it out of some red paper. So I just used my marker to fill that in. And down here you put these two little strips of silver. I've attached those. And now you have the little dials for these gauges, for these knobs. So I'm, I went ahead and put all of those on. And then there's this top piece for the oven that just defines the top of the oven here. So this is, again, really easy to put together. Now for the inside opening that I, that I die cut out of that white stove that I cut, that extra stove, I'm just going around the inside edges here just to give that a little bit of a shadow. Now from here I'm grabbing that little coffee mug and that tree. And again, this is from the Sizzix Thinlets die sets, and this is called Festive Things. So I die cut the solid mug and the open mug. And then I've die cut two of the trees out of some scrap green paper that I had, just again to give it a little bit of a thicker layering here. Now I've got this coffee mug. I glued that together. And then I've got the little container for the uh, tree. And I did die cut that out of some gold metallic cardstock. Now I've got my Hero Arts Unicorn Pigment Ink and I'm going all around the edges of this tree just to create a little bit of a snowy effect. But we'll be adding some more to these things a little bit later on. Now I can go ahead and add some glue to the back of this little container and glue my tree in there. And I'll just set that aside to dry. Now I've got all the little Christmas cookies here and I'm going to go all around the edges of these and these will be to decorate my tree. So I've got my Jelly Roll white gel pen and I'm going to quickly decorate these little items here. Just adding a few little ornaments to the tree and I'm sticking with the white. I just thought I wanted to keep these kind of consistent here and I'll add a little bit of frosting to that cookie with the white gel pen. And I did that for the rest of these. So now I can go ahead and attach these to my tree. I'm going to place a little star right at the very top and then I'll just fill in the rest here. So now I wanted to add a little glitter. So I've got my Nouveau Smooth Precision Pen and that's just a fine tipped pen to put the glue down here. And then I've got my Distress Glitters and this is Tinsel and Garland. And I'm going to use the Garland color here which is a beautiful gold tone. And I'll just place some little dots of that glue. So this pen works really well for this because you can just get some little tiny dots of glue. And then I'm going to add some glitter to this. And I'll add a little dot of glitter to the center of that coffee mug. I'll just sprinkle that glitter on. I'll tap away any excess there and I'll set these aside to dry. Now I've got more cookies here. These cookies are going to be for the shaker element on our retro oven. And I did the same thing. I went all the way around the edges on those. Now I've got my little insert here. These are the shaker domes. And these are from Sizzix. And these fit exactly into this little shaker window here. And then I've got all my little cookies. And I added a little bit of glitter there on some scrap cardstock here. And so in order to do this, I want to place that insert on a piece of black cardstock. Now, if you were creating a card, you would not have to do this. You could just place this right on your card. But since we're placing it on the clipboard, I wanted to make sure it was nice and secure here. So I'm placing this onto just a piece of cardstock, black cardstock that I cut down to size. 
and I'm going to shake on my little cookies and some glitter right onto that panel there. And you want to make sure you don't have any glitter around those edges because that's where our adhesive is going to be. So I'm using that Nouveau brush again just to sweep off any excess glitter there. Now once I have that all set, I can go ahead and add this little dome. And I want to just add a little anti-static powder tool to this before I attach it. And I'm just removing that tape and I'm going to center it right over the top of this little area here. Now I'll use my bone folder to press that out just to make sure that's nice and secure all around those edges so that none of that glitter escapes. Now you can see that'll fit right inside our oven. So I can go ahead and place some glue right around the back here and then I can go ahead and attach this. And isn't this just so adorable? This would look great on, a, on just a simple card as well. So now I've got these beautiful holiday greens, again from the Tim Holtz Sizzix collection. And I die cut those out of some scrap green cardstock. And I'm going back to that walnut stain ink to add a little bit of uh, aged effect all around the edges of these leaves. And then I'll add some color on the branch portion here as well. And I did that for all of these. I did die cut some extra leaves there as well from that same die set. And then I'm going to just use my Sizzix sculpting tool, just the, this pointy one, and just add a little vein down the center of each of these leaves. And then I'll just kind of just get, sculpt those a little bit, just using my fingers to kind of press those out. And then I'll use this sculpting tool with the large ball just to add a little dimension to these little ferns as well. Now going back to the white gesso and that clip, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of add some white, the white gesso paint to this entire thing and I don't want it to be perfect. I'm going to add a layer of paint. I want it to look old and antiqued a little bit. So here you can see I'm just dabbing on some paint here and there. You could always brush off some paint if you get too much. You just want to kind of let it just get sort of an aged effect here. So I'm just patting on ink here and there. And then again you can brush away any excess paint that you have. And you can also just let that dry and then sand it off later. But here I'm just taking a dry paper towel and I'm just kind of patting off some excess. Again, just going for that aged look here. Now I want to add a little embellishment and I'm using the silverware adornments from Tim Holtz. And this set comes with the fork, knife, and the spoon. So I kind of wanted to keep with that kitchen theme and I'm using my multi-medium matte glue to attach this. Now this is a super strong glue. It goes on clear and dries clear. And I want to use a good amount here just to make sure this doesn't go anywhere. So I'm going to apply a nice big dollop of that right here and then on the other side. And I'm just sort of finding the flattest spot of this clip just to make sure that it lays fairly flat here. And then I do want to clip this and set it aside. I just use my binders clips to clip my things together and I'll let that dry. Now this little word sentiment says, have a holly jolly Christmas. And this comes from the Quote Chips Christmas Noel collection from Tim Holtz. And these are the white with red letters. And later on we'll be using the red with white letters. So there are two different sets. Again, I've gone all around the edges with my walnut stain ink just to antique that a little bit. And then I'm going to position this at the bottom of the clipboard. And I'm using, again, a nice amount of this glue. Just kind of spread that out a little bit. And then I'll attach it up from the bottom of the clipboard, maybe about a quarter of an inch. So again, I'm going to grab one of my binder clips clip that together and let that dry. 
So let's go to back to the clipboard and the texture paste. And we want to use this now as snow. So I'm going to create a nice snowy effect. I want it to look like it's sort of sitting on a bed of snow here. So I'm just going to apply this right along that edge and then up around both sides as well. Now this is just to start. We will be adding a little bit more of this later on, but just to get started, I decided to just add a little bit here around the three sides and then I'm going to let that dry. Now, I should have said earlier, when you're using your stencils with the texture paste, you do wanna make sure you wash everything off really well when you're done. So wash, wash off your uh, palette knife and your stencils as well. You can just place it in some warm water while you're completing your project, but you do wanna make sure you clean that up. So now I've got that glitter, that garland glitter, and I'm going to just sprinkle a little on here. I'm using my Nuvo spoon. This is a double-ended spoon to do that. And I'm just kind of sprinkling a little bit here and there, and I'll let that dry. And then we'll tap off the excess later on. So now I'm using some Scotch foam mounting tape to pop up this little mug. And I'll just place that on my stove. We'll be adding more to this later on as well. I'll set that aside. Now I'm going back to the texture paste and I'm adding some texture to all of these leaves and I want this to look like a snowy effect on all of these leaves. But do keep in mind that since I added some of that walnut stain around the edges, it is going to pick up some of that color. So it will turn the white a little bit of a, an antiqued brown color but I wanted that to happen. But if you don't want that, then don't edge these uh, ferns and leaves. You wanna just leave them plain and then your texture paste will stay a bright white. So I went ahead and added this texture paste around all of these little branches and you can see what a nice effect that gives. So now I've got my Distress Mica Sprays and I'm gonna grab this one here. And this one is brushed pewter, which I thought would tie in well with the accents on the stove. So I'm shaking it up really well and I'm not going to spray it because I want to have some control over where this goes. I'm just going to spatter the entire clipboard here. And I will quickly heat set that. Now I've got my Tim Holtz Ideology mirrored hearts. And these are just some clear hearts and I want it to be red, so I'm using an alcohol ink marker to change the color of this. So remember, you can color these little embellishments with your alcohol markers, and it will dry permanently on there. You don't want to use a water-based marker because it will not dry. It'll just rub right off. So now I can go ahead and put the screws back in my little clips here and attach this back together. So now I can go ahead and attach the stove using my ATG 700 tape, and this is a permanent tape. You could use your uh, multimedia matte glue here as well. So I'm going to position this down, and I want to kind of slide it right up against that chipboard quote there. And uh, here I'm just lifting that top up just a little bit because I want to add my leaves and ferns here at the very top. So I'm just gonna lift that for a second while I position some of these right on top of this stove. So I'll clip these down to size. I'm using that multi-matte medium glue again, and I'll just position these in, in place here. So off camera, I also wanted to let you know that I added a little bit more texture paste right above that spoon and just above my little mug. I wanted it to look like some foam on the top of that mug. So I did those off camera and let those dry. So I just kind of tucked it in there just to add a little bit more of that snowy texture here. And again, for these leaves, I did die cut them out of a couple different colors so that they would have some extra texture here. And you do wanna just play around with these till you get these positioned properly. And I am going to leave that right side open a little bit because we're gonna be tucking in a few little embellishments there. Now, I think it would be fun if you were a cook and you like to bake that have your own special recipe 
maybe just print it in kind of a small scale and clip that to this clipboard as a gift for somebody. That would be really fun. But I'm going to add these three little pieces of paper here. And these came from that paper pad that I showed you e earlier, that Christmas Noel paper pad. And I just cut these out. And I'm just going around and scraping the edges here just to antique them a little bit. You could certainly just tear those with your fingers. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of that walnut stain around the edges. Now I will list and link all of the supplies that I've used today down below and on my blog as well. So if there's anything here that you're not sure about, you can check that out down below. Now I'm going to glue these three together. And then these I'm going to clip here to the right, but again, it would be really cute to print a small version of your favorite recipe for cookies and tuck it right in there. Since I don't really bake, I don't have recipes like that, I hate to admit, but I don't really like to cook. I like to craft. So here are those quote ch chips that I uh, suggested earlier that are the red with white letters, and we used the white with red earlier. So I'm going to go around the edges of that, again with the walnut stain. And I do that on each thing, each item here, because it ties everything together. So it just makes everything more consistent. And it kind of takes away that white edge on everything. Now I did decide to add one little cookie here. So I've attached that right to the front of my little shaker element here, and I'm gonna let that dry. Now I've got that little heart that we used our alcohol inks to color in red, and I'm going to position that right on the top of the clipboard. So let's go back to that tree. I'm going to add some scotch foam mounting tape to that. I went ahead and attached that just to the right of our stove. So now I wanted to add another little sentiment. So I went back to that same paper pack and I grabbed this black with white lettering page and I cut out the words Merry Christmas. And I'm gonna place that right down here at the bottom of my stove. I'm just centering it there. So that's another great way to get some cute sentiments using your paper pads. Just cut out what you need out of the cardstock that you have. So these are the uh, trimmings, uh, the metallic trimmings, and these are the adornment snowflakes. These are little snowflake charms. We're going to be using both of those. And then I've got some baker's twine here. That's from my local Italian bakery. And uh, I love when they tie the box with all that baker's twine because it's, I don't know, it just makes it like a little free gift that I get with my cookies. So now I'm trimming off that metallic ribbon. I've just threaded it through there at the top. I made a loop and then threaded it back through. And then you just pull up on that, cut away the excess. And then I've cut two strips of the baker's twine and I'm going to just string on this little snowflake charm. I'm going to use my uh, pick tool if I need it here to do that. But I didn't need it, so it slid right on there. So, But you could use your pick tool if you're having a hard time pushing it through that opening. So I'm going to go ahead and tie a nice bow here. And that'll hold that little charm in place. So now I can just snip away the excess from that bow. Now I grabbed my gesso again and I'm going to highlight that snowflake. I just thought it looked kind of flat there. So I'm just going to highlight a few things here while I have it out. So I just added it to the tops of the snowflake. I'm gonna add it to the little uh, knobs here on this clip and to that spoon, just again, to give it a little bit more of a snowy effect here. And I'm going around that paper. Again, wherever you add it and you've already added that walnut stain, it will pick up a little bit of that walnut stain color. And I decided to add a little bit more brightness to that tree, so I'm just kind of going around the edges and adding some to that little container as well. I'll add some to this little word quote. So again, this is just a nice way to tie everything back together here. 
And I just like to use my finger to do this. I just find I have a little bit more control that way. Now I've just got a, a red marker here. This is a detail tip marker, and I'm just going to add some little red berries here to my tree. Now I've got these adorable little confections from Tim Holtz. I just think these are so cute. Little peppermint sticks and little peppermint candies. Now I am going to add a little tiny bit of that walnut stain around the edges again just to take away that brightness. And then I'll position these right down here at the bottom of my tree. And I thought these added a lot to this little collage here. Now I'm going back to the texture paste because once I put those down, I just wanted them to look like they were sitting in the snow. So I'm using that texture paste just to fill back in any areas there. And then I'll go right along the top of that word quote again just to fill that in. Now I've got some beautiful sequins from 28 Lilac Lane, and you can see how gorgeous these are. Again, I'll list everything down below that's available. Um, I bought these a while ago, but I will double check to see if those are available. If not, I will list something below that's similar to it. So I'm just grabbing the little red sequins, and I want little clusters of three here. And I'll just fill in around those leaves here. So now let's take a closer look at the finished clipboard and you can see all the detail we have on this. This is just so much fun. I just, I love when you put so many items on it that you can't see it all in one pass. You kind of have to keep picking it up and looking at it. And I love when I give somebody one of these. They get such a kick out of all the little items and all the detail that you've put into it. And there's that little shaker element, which is so much fun. So I really hope you enjoyed today's video. And just to let you know, I have another video coming out fairly soon uh, doing another mini clipboard. So keep an eye out for that as well. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. And also, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to visit my blog at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. As always, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Sorry that it was a little bit longer, but I did want to include all these details. So I hope you have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.